All right, once you've retopologized your object, now it is time to UV unwrap it. So 3D Code provides a few different tools in order to help you UV unwrap, and you may at first be tempted to jump to the UV room up here in the corner. This is actually not quite the correct way that should be done. That is more for UVing objects that you import into 3D Code as opposed to objects that you create in 3D Code. Most of the retopology that you will need to do is going to happen in the retopology room, actually. Now if we look at our retopology mesh, you'll see on the right hand side that we have this UV preview. And as you can see in that UV preview, it's pretty messy. There's a lot of work to be done, and that's because our retopology mesh is only one UV shell. There are no seams on it or anything. So we need to cut some seams into this that will define the different UV shells. So the first and simplest way to do this is with a tool called Mark Seams under the UV tab in your retopology room. If you click on Mark Seams, this allows you to just select certain edges that will be marked as UV seams. So it will cut along these edges and split up the mesh using them. This only allows you to select one mesh or one edge at a time. And actually this isn't the best edge to select. I just want to cut this ring going around this section of the asteroid. So I can select edges one at a time. Oops. If you accidentally select a face like that, it might select the whole thing. Just undo. So one faster way, if, if you know that the edges you're cutting along make a complete edge loop, you can use the edge loops tool. What that will do is that will just select all the edges in that loop. And then you'll notice that we now have two different shells and they've been colorized to identify them. Now if you look in the UV preview, you'll see that this blue shell is primarily a light gray, slightly desaturated red color. And what that means is that it's flattening out very nicely. The more saturated the reds are, the more distorted that polygon is in UV space. So you see this big shell, it's very red, very distorted. This is not, we need to keep working on this. So let's cut some more. Now I know on this particular model there is another section uh, right here where we could very easily just cut a loop. So again, with UV edge loops turned on, I can just select that and in one click now we've got a new shell. So we've got three shells. So now it's time to start cutting somewhere else. Now this mesh was created using the automatic retopology with a few minor tweaks. So the edge loops aren't very clean. As you notice, if I put my edge loops cursor anywhere, you'll see that we get quite a lot of loops that go all the way around the model and in different directions. So this is a little, it can be a little hard to predict. So another tool we have access to that can make that can we can work fairly quickly with but also have very predictable results is the UV path tool. And the way this works is that you will click on a vertex and then you'll click on another vertex somewhere and 3D coat will draw the shortest possible line between those two points running along the edges. So if I draw up here sort of following this edge of the asteroid and I hit enter, then those, then those edges will be cut and turned into a seam. And then I can continue that path going you know, in maybe this direction until it meets up back with the edge over here. Hit enter, and there we go, we have a new UV shell. Now, Using the UV path tool will not preview the shells in the UV preview window, so we need to go back to mark seams in order to see what that looks like. And this one's flattening out very nicely. This one still needs a little bit of work. It's getting there though. Now with the UV path tool, if I wanted to start selecting vertices over here, 
I need to deactivate this vertex here because otherwise it's going to start drawing from that point. So if you hit escape, that will reset the vertices and you can start anew. So let's see where would be a good spot to go. So I'm going to follow this edge loop. I'll click right there and maybe continue Whoops, along here. And maybe, now you see that? I want it to go around here, but the shortest possible path actually goes this way. So I need to place a vertex here, and then I can keep going. So let's see. Hmm. I go right there. This isn't going to be the cleanest example of UV seams, but it'll get the point across. So if I meet back up with the existing seams and I hit enter, now we get a couple more islands, a couple more UV shells. And you'll see they're all unfolding fairly nicely. All right, now if I now we still we have all these nice UV islands, but you'll see in our UV preview we still have the original unclean shell. That's because we haven't actually unwrapped these. We've only cut the seams. We have to go down here to commands and click on unwrap. And you'll see it'll place some our UV islands within one UV tile. After you've done this, you can manually reposition them. If you select a shell, you can move it around, rotate it, and scale it. Now you notice when I scale it, the colors change. That's because 3D Coat uses blue and red to tell you how small or how large a face is relative to its 3D counterpart. If it's red, that means it's a bit larger, it got expanded, and if it's blue, then it was shrunk, it's smaller. So if I make this island really big, it becomes very red and the other islands become fairly blue. Most of the time you want to try and keep them as gray as possible. So if I'm going to expand one, I'm going to have to expand the others. And you also want these UV islands to take up as much space as possible. Now once I've, also you can use control to deselect them, once I've made them a bit larger I can either place them manually by hand or I could go over to the commands and I could go to pack UV. What that will do is it will reorganize the shells to make them all fit in with the one UV tile. It will move them, rotate them, and occasionally even scale them in order to get the best fit possible. So this actually turned out really well, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And now that we have the UVs for this object set, we are ready to bake the normal map from the high resolution mesh onto the low resolution mesh and get it ready for texturing. And I'll discuss that in the next video.